There is a saying in developers world that naming is hard. So how to name things that they will be understandable to others. And I will give you one rule and then we will make a practice kind of example how to name the things. So methods, variables and all of that. So the rule of thumb for me personally is that the code should be understandable by a new person joining your team or joining your project. So person you don't know, it may be on other side of the world, you don't have any direct contact and that person should understand what objects mean without any comments. Not even without documentation, but without any comments. And speaking of comments, it's a good practice to comment your code that it would be understandable, right? So it would explain what the code does. But comments actually are additional way on top of the code. So the first line of defense, as so to speak, is to make the code readable. And only then, if you fail at that, or if it's still hard to explain, then add comments on top. As a famous person, Uncle Bob Martin, said in a tweet, a comment is a failure to express yourself in the code. Try not to fail, but if you do, then write a comment. So in this example, I will give you an example. Let's say we have a report service. It's a pretty simple example, but that's my way of explaining things. I'm trying to talk in simple ways to explain difficult concepts. So we have a function report in some kind of class. Let's call it report service. And this is written by you. And then you have new guy joining the team and they need to use that method, that report. So they have a controller, empty controller, and they need to use that report without any documentation, without any explanation. So the task is just get the report of transactions of data, something like that. And they go, okay, there is a service. So service equals new report service, which is fine. PHP Storm auto completes a lot of things. But now, so report equals service report. And then they start questioning things. So, okay, report, what does it return? Is it the data? Is it the PDF? Is it a chart? And then the parameters from, to, and type. Okay, so from, to are probably dates, but maybe they are date times or timestamps. I don't know. And type, okay, type of what? Type of transaction, type of user. Okay, let's take a look at the function and then the definition of that function doesn't say much more than that. So no comments here and they need to dig deeper into the logic of that function to find out what are the parameters, are they required or not and how to use that function. So this is a problem and it is figure outable. There is a word I really like, everything is figure outable but it takes time to understand that this is a date actually, that this is required otherwise that query would fail then that type ID is still unclear what that is. So they need to go to the database and see foreign key to which other table, what are the values and stuff like that. Then that to array probably means that report returns the array and then the controller should build a PDF from that. So the list of questions still stay. Now, how can we improve that service method to be more readable and more understandable? First, naming of the method. Method report doesn't mean anything. It's like generic method of like, it's a car. Doesn't matter if it's BMW or Lexus or Tesla, it's a car, right? So let's make it more specific. First, get. I really like the prefixes of the method. So whether it's get or post or store or update or save something like that. So the action. Report. But what kind of report? Is it a PDF? Is it a chart? Is it a data? Let get report data. Much clearer, right? And you shouldn't make the methods too long, but sometimes it is beneficial to have even deeper meaning. So if you have several reports, you may add get financial report data or something like that. And this alone makes it much clearer. So now from the controller instead of report, we would do this and get financial report data is much more meaningful than just report. Next, what the function returns. From PHP 7, we have a thing called return type declarations. And we can add array. And that would be our explanation that this function returns an array. And notice we didn't add that in the comment, we add that in the method itself. And now let's see in the controller. See, it shows an array. And let's do a similar thing to the parameters. And this is called type hinting. 
this also came with PHP 7 and these are the types that could be used. So for example, from and to are actually dates, but there's no type date in the PHP. So we can do that string and then string and type is an integer. An integer does exist in the list, so it's int, int type. This is better, but now let's rename the variables, rename the parameter so it would contain exactly the meaning. So from date to date and transaction type. Let's make it more readable like this. And then of course we need to rename them inside of the function. So to date and transaction type like this. And now let's see what happens in the controller. Get financial report data. See how more readable it is. Now it is exactly clear that this is a date and this is a date and this is a transaction type of type integer. And if we try to fill in some parameters, it will be even more clear in PHP Storm. So something like that. It will show us the parameters inside of that method. So as you can see, this is the way how we can make it much more understandable to any other developer, junior developer, just by naming things. So naming the function, naming the methods, naming the parameters, giving them type hints, return types and all of that. So this is the minimum thing you can do to make your code more readable. And this is what I wish to you to write more readable code. And if you want more tips on that, subscribe to the channel because I'm shooting videos almost daily now. Join 20,000 subscribers and see you guys in other videos.